Hello, this is George Hutton, and you are listening to the Mind Persuasion Podcast. Today we continue our study of linguistic presuppositions, a subset of the Milton model, otherwise known as covert hypnosis. Today our first pattern is called repetitive cue words. These are words like to, again, back, also, and either. As they are single words and not a grammatical pattern like many of the other presuppositions, They are highly flexible and can be used in a number of different ways. In general, when you use these words, you are revisiting an idea in a sentence, either an idea you've explicitly stated or one that has been implicitly thought by either you or another person, and you are simply referring to it again. For example, let's look at the idea of exercise is the best way to lose weight. I heard that exercise is the best way to lose weight, And no matter how many diets and methods I've tried, I keep coming back to that simple truth. In this idea, the idea has been expressed once and then come back to by the speaker, effectively repeating it as a rediscovered truth, something that would be difficult to disagree with. Another example, most leading dietitians, while agreeing that what you eat is important, always come back to the basic principle that daily exercise is the best way to lose weight. In this case, the first instance of the idea is only implied and is only actually mentioned when it is come back to. This implies that these dietitians, whoever they are, knew this at the beginning and then keep coming back to it. For the idea dollar cost averaging is the best way to make money in the stock market, consider the word again. Again and again, people consistently realize that dollar cost averaging is the best way to make money in the stock market. In this case, combining again and again with people implies that many people over the course of some vague period of time are independently realizing the power of dollar cost averaging. As mentioned previously, this is hard to argue with. How about this one? Investment bankers also realize the wealth building power of dollar cost averaging. Here the group of people is implied investment bankers realize the power of dollar cost averaging in addition to some other unnamed group. The reader or listener will generally assume this group to be of the same expertise from a financial perspective as investment bankers. This is very powerful as it implies social proof from whatever group of people the listener or reader cares to imagine. Salespeople that consistently outperform their peers again and again understand the power of simple linguistic presuppositions to give them an incredible edge. Top closers in any company also understand the subtle power of presuppositions to give them incredibly lucrative skills in sales. Despite the many years of training and seminars, top salespeople come back again and again to the simple power of presuppositions, which can be learned in their entirety by listening to this podcast on a daily basis. You can either continue or try method after method, or you too, like many others, can come back to the simple strategy of combining subtly powerful presuppositions which will lead you again and again to increasing sales and personal income. Our next pattern is called contrary to expectation. This is very simple, and if it were a magic trick, it would rely heavily on mental misdirection. It basically involves the word should. They kind of put the listener or reader into a mental bind and force them to implicitly agree with your message or idea as they will be focusing on the logic of the statement. By themselves, these aren't all that powerful but can be peppered throughout your message here and there to drop your idea or variations of it several times throughout the conversation. For example, with the idea of exercise is the best way to lose weight, there are several ways to use this. Should you not understand why exercise is the best way to lose weight, I'd be happy to explain it to you. If you say the above and they don't respond, they've tacitly agreed with the idea. If they actually ask for an explanation, the implication is that once you do explain it, they will accept the idea. If you should decide you'd like to lose weight in the easiest way possible, then I'll show you a simple exercise program. This one mentally binds them up so that they have no real choice but to accept this idea. How about dollar cost averaging? If you should not understand why dollar cost averaging is so incredibly lucrative, then I can explain it to you if you'd like to make an appointment. If you should decide that you'd like to find the easiest, safest, and simplest way to make money in the stock market, I can explain dollar cost averaging to you. 
If you should wonder why so many people have found it so easy to grow wealth consistently and with no real effort, I'd be happy to explain the concept of dollar cost averaging to you. If you should wonder how useful these patterns can be, just imagine a future where you could easily persuade others with only a few minutes of conversation. If you should think that linguistic presuppositions are only for easy and effective conversational persuasion, just think of how well you'll be able to deflect manipulation once you learn these powerful strategies. If you should think that these presuppositions are only useful one at a time, wait until you start practicing them and then you'll learn how to combine them in ways that will make virtually any message or idea you have irresistibly attractive to your listeners. Our next pattern is called Selection Restriction. This particular pattern has a wide variety of applications, both good and bad. Anytime you take a group of things, ideas, time periods, people, etc., and categorize them into subgroups and assign one subgroup a characteristic, you are implying that the other subgroups do not have this characteristic. Lawyers make excellent politicians. Although according to the rules of logic, this statement says nothing about people who aren't lawyers and their ability to be politicians, the listener will assume that is the meaning of the statement, that lawyers are the best politicians. Women have excellent communication skills and can talk about many subjects at once. While not stated explicitly, this implies that men don't have excellent communication skills and can't talk about more than one subject. He's the guy I see walking every morning. While that guy you see walking every morning may do a variety of things during the day, he is only the walking guy in your mind as described in that statement. Anytime you give somebody something, some event, any sort of label, you are effectively defining it only in those terms and are using this pattern for better or for worse. So how do you use this persuasively in a positive way? Simple. Separate out groups of pretend people into two groups attribute some genuinely desirable characteristic to one group, and phrase it so they achieved that desirable trait by doing whatever it is you are persuading your listener to do. Be careful not to put the other group into any sort of bad light, as that will diminish your persuasive power according to the laws of karma. Some examples. Exercise is the best way to lose weight. Plenty of people have tried plenty different weight loss techniques, and those that have had the most success have discovered that the best way to lose weight is through simple daily exercise. So here you have a group within a group. The first group is people in general. The second subgroup is people who have tried to lose weight. The group within that group are the ones that have successfully lost weight, and they have lost weight because they exercised. Dollar cost averaging is a great way to make money. Many people have tried many different investment strategies over time, but the people that are now happily retired will tell you that the easiest way to get there is through simple dollar cost averaging. The selected group is happily retired people, and they got there through dollar cost averaging. Now, I don't know exactly where you are in your sales career or your particular skill level when it comes to persuasion. Some people like to study persuasion and persuasion techniques as a hobby while others use it on a daily basis to make a significant amount of income. Those that do are either naturals, meaning they were born to sell and have been persuading people as long as they could walk, or those that learn their techniques consciously and have perfected the art of persuasion over a long period of time. Those that have learned to become masters of persuasion through the study of specific techniques and language patterns will tell you hands down that presuppositions are likely the most powerful most effective, and most useful set of language patterns to use conversationally that exist. No other set of patterns will allow you to carefully lead the mind and emotions of your listener to better and more empowering places so that everybody benefits. Our next pattern is called questions. This one is pretty simple and can be used very well along with other presuppositions or by itself if phrased correctly and with enough rapport. The pattern is questions. In English, we almost always begin an interrogative sentence with a question word like who, how, did, will, won't, where, which, etc. Whenever we hear these as listeners, we unconsciously switch into listen and answer mode where we make ourselves open for information in order to respond with an intelligent answer. By sliding your idea within the question, no matter how they answer, they will have to accept the idea as true. For example, exercise is the best way to lose weight. 
Do you know how incredibly easy it is to lose weight with only exercise? Do you know how many people have lost weight simply by adding 10 minutes of moderate cardio every morning? Are you aware of how many people are losing weight with simple exercise? Can you think of anything more powerful than simple exercise to lose weight? Whether you answer yes or no to these questions, you will accept the underlying idea even without knowing that you are being persuaded. Dollar cost averaging is the best way to make money in the stock market. Do you know how quickly you can build up your retirement through simple dollar cost averaging? Do you know how many people have become wealthy through simple dollar cost averaging? Have you heard about dollar cost averaging and how you can use it to make a lot of money almost on autopilot? Do you realize how powerful these patterns are, not only for conversationally persuading others, but to detect unhelpful persuasion from those that would otherwise manipulate you? Are you aware how much money salespeople have made using these patterns alone? Are you beginning to see how you can easily use these patterns in all aspects of your life? Thank you for listening to the Mind Persuasion Podcast. I'm George Hutton, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. 